let me ask you this. This is this is like an opinion thing, and and I know that if we're if we're being straight down the line, what we know about Dusty Baker, this may not be a thing. But the question is, should it be? Jake Myers had a hit yesterday, another single. Uh, he continues to have no power at the plate whatsoever. Uh, I think his OPS is below 600. Not good. Justin Durden's been smashing the ball. He came in for Jordan yesterday and promptly got a base hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Durden's OPS is over 800, and he's hitting over 300. Considering we're talking about Jordan, we're talking about left field, should Justin Durden essentially be in a late position battle with Jake Myers? Whether Jake Myers is in the mix or not is irrelevant to me. Durden has played himself into being a guy that should be in consideration to make this team breaking camp and should be on this roster, especially because of what they're dealing with, with depth in the outfield that we talked about. The guy has done nothing to disappoint when you hear Dusty talk about him. It's not like Dusty talking about Chaz. He's talking and raving about the guy being even keeled, being ready for whatever the moment brings being ready to take advantage of whether, whatever opportunity he's given and then talking about him on the field, knowing that he, you know, he's ready at the plate. He's hitting baseballs when they're delivered to him in a spot where he's looking for them. He's doing all the things necessary, little things and big things, to say that this is an opportunity he wants to seize. And that's the kind of thing that you you should be intrigued by and you should be considering to the la- very last minute because whether Jake is hitting for power or not, that's irrelevant to me simply because of the fact that until he got to the bigs for his first go-round, he wasn't really showing a whole lot of pop. And then all of a sudden he had some pop immediately when he was in the Astros lineup. Then the injuries happened and everything else happened. And then that you know kind of all was tabled. But he's never been known as a power hitter. If he's getting singles, that's great. But his OPS isn't showing you that he's a guy that's going to be doing what a normal center fielder should be doing with a lineup like this. So if Durden's the kind, the guy that keeps doing this and Dusty likes him and we know how that matters and Dusty is intrigued enough to put him on the roster, I'm fine with that because we don't know enough about him, but we like what we've seen. We don't know what's going on with Jake Myers right now, and we don't know if he's going to get back what we've seen. So... If I'm going to go with what I've seen in spring, in spring training, I'm going to go with a guy that has produced and looks like he's ready to try and make this team and make an impact. See, and that's that's kind of exactly what I'm getting at. The you know Jake Myers in 2021 was able to put all the tools together at Sugar Land and was able to hit, showed some pop, had a little bit of home run power, had a lot of doubles power, had a high OPS, had a, had a high average, was was drawing walks, was stealing bases. Came up uh, with the Astros, played pretty well, got hurt. Last season, comes back to the Astros, looks like it came up too soon, wasn't really ready, struggled badly, got sent down to AAA, and showed the guy he was in, in 2021 with, with Sugar Land, which was a guy hitting for 300 average and hitting for power and hitting home runs and hitting doubles and stealing bases. And this spring, we're not, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing anything remotely close to that. And I think we have to try to figure out, you know, it, did the injury – change Jake Myers are we ever going to see that guy again and considering he has not really hit the ball with any kind of authority in the spring and Durden's been mashing Mm -hmm. I think it might do Jake Myers some good to go down triple a and get his get his swing back get his swag back and kind of remember who he is that's kind of what it took last year maybe that's what it takes again but for the way Durden is playing the way he is hitting and when you consider well you're probably talking about a guy playing left field uh, as opposed to center field. And look, Mauricio Dubon's not going anywhere because he's not just the backup center fielder. He's the backup shortstop. Sure. So he's not going anywhere unless they go outside the organization and get another depth guy. So you know Dubon isn't getting isn't, isn't moving. I think he's also out of options. So if you tried to move him, he's gone. But well, Myers I, I, is a by guy. By the way, who, just side note, wouldn't, wouldn't be hurt in the least if that happened, by the way. Well, I understand that, but you have to replace him. Somebody's got to right. be back. Right, but, but we just we talked about the fact that Iglesias is sitting there and waiting on what Miami will, will or won't do. But you know, we talked about it yesterday. I'd rather have Iglesias on this team than Dubon. If Dubon is the only reason why Dubon is being considered more so is because of the fact that he can play multiple positions. You can find a guy like Hensley that can play multiple positions, but in terms of playing one position when it's really important right now, I'd rather w- go with an established major league hitter that hit 290 plus last year in the big leagues. So uh, there's other options for you than Dubon because Dubon last year as a personal center fielder was personally offensive sometimes when he was in the outfield. 
Um, he's definitely can't even hit his weight most times when he's in the batter's box. And right now, with depth issues because of the injuries, you need guys that are going to not only fill a spot in the lineup, but actually do something when they're in there. I have zero confidence in Dubon. We're talking about zero confidence right now, Jake Myers. I have zero confidence as well in Dubon. Oh, I also have no confidence in Dubon, but we know Dusty loves him, even though you and I, look, we've both seen Dubon uh, has an infielder's arm in the outfield, and some of those rainbow throws that he makes from deep center field that look like they take 14 minutes to get to the infield, well, I don't need to see those. Uh, if, if I had to choose between the backup center fielder being Dubon or Jake Myers, I'll live with Jake Myers for now, but if Durden can, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how much Durden can play center field at the major league level, but if he's going to hit the way he's hitting, uh, and he's going to play primarily left field, and maybe he'd have to give Chaz uh, a day off every couple of weeks. I'm willing to roll the dice with that. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, this is where Dana Brown's going to start earning his money. I'm interested in, in seeing if there's possibilities that he's exploring to upgrade this roster in the short term while we get through this little bump in the road with injuries because that would be something that really I would be pleased with because – it's easy to rest on your laurels and know this is a championship caliber ball club when healthy, and we'll just get back to being healthy and wait it out. But if you can do some things, some subtle tweaks, you don't have to give up anything in a lot of cases to get what you're going to get, and they help you in the short term bridge the gap and be better for it, that's what I want to see Dana Brown doing. I don't want him to continue to try and purge and, and, and deplete the minor league system, which is already less than stellar. I, I want to see him fortify a roster that's already one of the best, if not the best in baseball, to overcome injuries and do so in a creative enough way where you, you're not mortgaging the farm, but you're making your, your team better in the short term, and I think that's possible.